Science in Pajamas, Science in Pajamas, another episode of Science in Pajamas. Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about epistasis. Now, epistasis is when you have one gene that can completely mask and hide the effects of another. Um, so it is going to be a dihybrid cross because we're looking at two different genes. And we'll start off looking at Labrador Retrievers because they are totes, adorbs, and cute. I, I love them. They're great dogs. So there's two genes that we're going to be looking at. The first gene is looking at the... One moment. Yeah. We'll start off with this one. Hi, Ripley. So we're going to start off by talking about the genes themselves. So we're... Hi. Hi. You heard me talking about labs and you had to come in. I know. You're not a lab. You're a great little adorable shelter. But your sister was a lab, yeah? Sorry, I digress. So, <laughs> okay. There he goes. Come on. No. Come on. There you go. He likes to curl up with me. Good boy. See? Look how cute he is. <laughs> Anyways, back to the example. So there are two genes for um, lab fur color. The first one is to actually talk about the pigments. So there are two types of pigments that can be produced. If the dog is dominant for that gene, then they will be black fur labs. If, though, instead of being dominant, if they're recessive for this gene, it's okay, dude, you can stay. Sorry, I put the thing on you. If they are recessive, then they're going to be brown. So this is how you get black labs and brown labs. However, this is assuming that the Sankin gene, which deals with actually taking the pigments that are produced, and putting them into the skin so that they can be expressed in the fur. Assuming that that gene, that second gene is dominant, you will be able to make the pigments and deposit them, which means you will see that fur color. So what I mean by that is, if you are making the black pigments, whether you're homozygous dominant or heterozygous, and you are able to deposit them, whether it's, actually, you know, I like using the E for this one, whether it is homozygous or heterozygous, that leads to black labs. So it doesn't matter if these ones with the line are dominant or recessive, whether it's big B, big B, big E, big E, big B, little B, big E, little E. You are making the black pigments and you are able to deposit them into the skin so they can be seen. If you are recessive for the first trait, but dominant for the second one, this is how you get brown labs. And what we mean by that is you are making the recessive pigments, the brown pigments, but you're still able to deposit them into the skin, so you're gonna see them and you end up with brown fur. However, what if that second gene is not dominant? What if that second gene is recessive? Both of these will result in yellow labs. So in this case, they can make the black pigment, but it cannot be put into the skin. So if it can't be put into the skin, it can't be taken up by the fur, and it will not be seen. This gene makes the brown pigment, but once again, cannot be put into the skin, cannot be taken up by the fur, and thus will not be seen, and that's why we see the yellow color. So this gene, when it's recessive, will actually hide the effects of that gene. 
So let's do one of these together. Alright. See if I can finagle around Ripley. Yeah, it's okay, dude. Yeah, you go, boy. So we're going to start off with yeah, two parents. Because, well, you know, that's usually how it works. So we're going to have both parents are heterozygous for both traits. That means that both parents are black labs. They're making the black pigment, but they're properly depositing it into the skin. Now as we go through and we figure out the allele combinations, These are the allele combinations that each parent can give. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to put them on my dihybrid cross that you see behind me without disturbing Ripley too much, so bear with me. <laughs> there we go. Big B, big E, big B, little E, little B, big E, little B, little E. I'm also going to put that on this side here because remember we said both parents are heterozygous for both traits. Alright, I like starting out with one letter at a time. So I'm going to go through and do the B's first. So I got all the B's distributed and put together. Now I'm going to go back and do the second gene, the E gene. So let's take a look at this now, shall we? We want to figure out how many are, or what's the likelihood of each color being seen. Yeah. Now remember, to show up as a black lab, they will need at least one dominant B and at least one dominant E. That's to be black. To show up as brown, they're going to be recessive for the first trait, but they have at least one dominant letter for the second. And to be a yellow lab, that means that they're going to be recess, or sorry, it doesn't matter what the first trait is, it doesn't matter at all, but they will be recessive for the last trait. All right, so let's try and find out how many boxes do we see at least one capital B and one capital E. So we have one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
So we have 9 out of 16, or 9 16th chance of having a black lab. All right. Well, how about for brown lab? That means that we're recessive for the first trait, but dominant for the second. So we have... One, two, three. A three out of sixteen chance, or three sixteenth chance of being a brown lab. And for the last one, let's look at the chance of being a yellow lab. Now, for the yellow lab, it doesn't matter what the B gene is. The second allele or the second gene has to be recessive. So we have one, two, three, four. So we have a four out of sixteen chance or a one fourth chance of having a yellow lab. And the reason why we that is, is because remember, when the second gene is recessive like that, it will block the effects of the first gene. So it doesn't matter whether you are making the black pigments or the brown pigments, they cannot be deposited into the skin, so therefore they will not be seen. That's why we'll see a yellow lab instead. All right, so I hope this kind of helped you a little bit more to understand the idea of epistasis like it's very similar to the dihybrid crosses it's just a slight difference in interpreting them but if you have any other questions definitely let me know you guys all right so email all the good stuff otherwise take care of yourselves all right keep awesome keep safe keep healthy bye guys <laughs>